<laughs> there we go. All right, how's that? I know, it's an art stream without technical difficulties. Voice, mute. How's that possible? Loud and clear. Great. Now let's check the video feed. It looks pretty good. I can tell from my end. Okay. Still good? I'm closing the window. Yeah. So in OBS, I was able to change the settings, but obviously quitting out, restarting it made it much better. Smooth, perfect, great. All right, we're back in action. So um, on this, I'm going to basically... All right, so here's the human head, and this is a three-quarter shot. If the light source is down here, illuminating up here, you, you can see I've already started this hard ridge line, which is the uh, nose line here. It catches... It's like the light hits there and, and um, creates... Um, what I would say is, if you imagine looking at... A mountain and the light source is here the light is going to illuminate this side and that's kind of the highest point the light can't basically bend <clears throat> unless there's a black hole here but there's no black hole and let's just say for the purposes of argument there's no black hole inside the person's head so this light basically has to travel in a straight line and so uh, the furthest it can go is to the top of this point here and so this side is in shadow. So if you look at the nose, let's say, all right, if this, no, if this is these nostrils, and we're looking up on that nose, this light, it basically hits this line here, and that line represents this point. Okay? And so everything from this point could be in shadow. Uh, if you wanted to, or you could say it hits that line, but the, the real shadow doesn't start till this side, so it's possible to do that as well. And this being the eye. Okay, so I'm going to show you some very quick ways to uh, You want the mountain sketch. All right, you know, I'll sketch on the back of this mountain sketch so it is one drawing. So, very quickly, you can do a traditional face. The light would be up here. Shadows the eyebrow. The brow casts a shadow underneath the eye sockets. The nose basically casts a shadow. The upper lip has a shadow. The lower lip creates a shadow above that chin. The cheekbones, if you're blessed with high cheekbones, will create shadows underneath there. The ear will cast a shadow. And then the head itself casts a shadow on the neck below it. Okay? So that's lighting scheme number one. Number two, you have the same lighting scheme. Okay? But in this instance, the light is even more intense so that the shadows are darker. And then the shadows basically fall within the, the um, if you look at a skull, right? This is probably the worst skull ever, but <laughs> these sockets here, the shadow is going to basically kind of fall into the shapes of the sockets there. This nose, the shadow gets even deeper. This lower lip creates even more of a, sh of a shadow. And then these shapes on the skull become even more pronounced. Okay. So it's like version one, but even more. 
And then you can even go further with that and say, well, this brow, this nose, it's almost like the nose pops out of the shadow there. And the face is almost entirely shadow like that. Okay, does that make sense? The face, uh, the shadows do f depend on the facial structures for sure. I'm just using a very generic kind of face with uh, actually very Caucasian features, I guess. But the ear itself actually even casts a shadow onto itself. So that's why a lot of times when you see me draw something, I'll draw the ear completely in black. And then this head casts even a darker shadow and a bigger shadow across. And then you can do side lighting schemes, right? Where the nose, I was kind of illustrating with that pyramid or mountaintop, this nose itself creates a shadow. The eye socket creates a shadow, so the shadows are to the to that side. This uh, spot here on the uh, upper lip casts a little divot shadow. Upper lip, and then the side of this cheek, this chin side, side of that chin, sorry, side of that cheek, side of that temple. And you have that. Okay, because we're on video, actually I can just show it on the same illustration and you can do a time lapse and see it. So as that shadow get, as this light source gets um, more intense, this nose shadow will get cast deeper the same way like your shadow in the course of a day gets longer as the sun sets. When the sun's right above you, the shadow's right underneath. And then as it kind of moves away from you at an angle, your shadow on the ground lengthens and, and distorts. And so now these shadows start getting deeper and darker on the side of this head here. Okay. And then it can go even darker still. So that top part of the upper lip, this gully, like right there, this, if you look at the upper lip, lower lip, the chin, you can see how this chin kind of protrudes out. So, Imagine this uh, this imagine sort of the sun kind of rotating around this head and then even more so it actually starts all that starts looking like it's in shadow. And then it starts coming across the forehead. It keeps going <clears throat> and entirely it becomes all black itself okay so when we get to cyborg here I'm gonna do a thing where the light kind of catches that nose here that part of the, the eye socket has a deep shadow and then I'm gonna basically render out of it his hair is up here I'm just sort of doing the edge edge line of his hair, and then the rest is going to be black up here. Okay. I've 
got this, uh, it's, a, it's a brush pen. Oh, I'll do one last head, I forgot. Then there is the... Um, Complete up lighting. apple there. And this is when like they're holding a candle underneath their face essentially. So if you really get into it there's probably like 20 different ways you can kind of light a face. Actually an infinite probably but 20 really uh, distinctly different ones and if you want to teach yourself you can maybe flip through different comic books and see how different people approach and put the classifications together. There's one where there's like a strong front light source and then a weak back light source. And so you get strong shadows, but then you have reflected light on the other side of the head. Okay. So with this, um, Do that, and then thing with uh, metal is <clears throat> the same way we we're talking about that light hitting the top of that mountain, this ridge line, this ridge line here. I'm looking for the highest point of, let's say, this cheekbone here, and this line, the same way I've done it on the nose, is going to be on that cheek. But rather than doing a straight line like that, which you can do. The thing with metal is that it can take reflections, and that's precisely what this is. is a reflection of, of some element over here reflecting on that shiny um, silver metal. Um, but it can distort it, especially if the, if the metal itself is curved. And so you add a little life to that line, and you put it basically where all the high points, the ridge lines, might be right and you start seeing it kind of you know Colossus whether it's Colossus or C Cyborg Iron Man Dr. Fate they all kind of follow the same thing so I'm actually drawing a shadow now across that uh, underneath the chin second. So it's more of a chrome look. Yes, this is definitely a chrome look. One second. Plate Riot uh, has resubscribed. Thank you very much. Spengy4 has resubscribed. Okay. One second, guys. Okay. This is a, uh, it's a Zeno on here. 
I believe it's made by, well, I don't know who makes it. It's just in my art bag. I don't know how these things end up there. <laughs> The same way I, I kind of drew the shadow along this, this cheek line here. This is the high point of the shadow of the shoulder armor itself. I mean, the easiest way to think about doing chrome effects is if you have an object like this, a cylinder, just run the highlights along the edges near the edges like this, and you can make one kind of thicker than the other. Okay, let's say, let's say that's a bullet. Okay, and then to help kind of sell it, Although that bullet has a tip that's really kind of... There we go. One second, I'll open this up here. It's important to have that kind of outer edge. That rim lighting is to um, basically run a highlight along the edge, keep it consistently on the same side, like that. Okay, so this taking that same idea, it would be kind of doing that, right? It would be. Okay, and then I'm going to use the pencil here, because this is just a sketch, and doing some of the lighting, excuse me, that it's just talking about light source being kind of down here and projecting it up. Poop Kid has resubscribed. Hey, PK. A Nespian 79 has subscribed as Ignite Comics has. So done the same. Okay. All right, one second, I'm going to get a red marker.
say okay a lot. And now I'm just going to kind of beef up some of the um, pencil shadows that I have here. Some actual ink lines. So I'm like looking at the overall drawing and trying to balance the uh, <laughs> Ignite Comics. Yahoo! Um, Ibhad. Ibhad has subscribed. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm basically sort of darkening some of these shapes that, uh, these forms that I darkened using pencil. I'm also drawing some reflection lines but thinner. I think the trick to the reflection is not to make all the lines the same weight and size and shape. So if you can go in there with a the regular marker like this and uh, kind of add to them, especially along the edges like this here. All right. Do you shade darker skin characters differently than lighter skin? Not necessarily. Um, sorry. One of my daughters is flying out to Seoul today, so she's going to visit our other daughter who's out there. So I'm saying goodbye. She's on her flight right now. That's Kelsey. You guys know her. Okay, one second. What am I doing? I'm turning off the heat in my office here. It's getting a little warm. Meanwhile, Rescue Whale has resubscribed. Hey, Noose, 1,000. Seoul is cool. I'm trying to get out there myself, perhaps later this year. I've got an insane travel schedule, um, especially this first quarter of the year. And then, um, gosh, um, they had a Comic Con in Seoul for the first time, Read Pop. The people that do New York Comic Con had it in August, first weekend in August. I'm also going to Boston Comic Con for sure. That's in August, the second week of August. So if those, Boston is for sure in terms of that time period. But if Korea Comic Con is in that same first week, first weekend, uh, that's a lot of travel in August right there. And then our son, um, Lucas, is going to SMU, which is in Dallas, and we're going to maybe rent an RV. I don't know if any of you guys have had that experience of traveling in an RV, but we, Carla, my wife, and I have been talking about renting an RV and driving from L.A. out to Dallas and kind of stopping at different places like the Grand Canyon, White Sands, uh, Desert, Carlsbad Caverns outside of El Paso, um, 
and doing that with a bunch of the family members, actually. Yep, it's a fun road trip. White Sands is awesome. Uh, yeah. Grand Canyon is pretty cool. Okay. Okay, draw in some more reflections there. I want to put in terms of uh, ethnicity and modeling or rendering. Uh, yeah, if they're a darker tone skin, you can probably put more line work and um, they don't look more weathered per se. Um, I know if I do a lot of rendering on female faces in particular, they can start looking older. So um, you'll see this kind of odd thing that I'll do where you have a male character and a female character. They're standing in the same lighting and there's all these kind of crazy shadows on a male face. And then the women's shadowing is a lot simpler or more defined like clearly defined uh, a lot less line work because the line work can make faces look older more craggly weathered and um, uh, if it's a younger looking character you just want to be careful so you do have to think about it a little bit that's the short answer to it but uh, it all depends on kind of what you're going for in that particular scene if you're trying to make a, a character look like they've just been dragged through you know, through hell and back, um, uh, a darker lighting scheme, more rendering is the way to go. But again, you don't want them to look out of character, not out of character, you don't want the characters to look different than how they looked every other panel in the same story. So you have to be a little judicious about how crazy you get with the lighting and rendering. You just want to keep it consistent within your own internal style. And then lastly, I'm going to put some um, modular lines, I guess. I don't know what else to call it other than these are, it's almost like segmented armor seams or whatever within the armor itself. Uh, so if he needed access to his right temple area, you could just kind of grab that plate and pull it out. The cool thing about these seam lines is they're just like these lines here along these segments is that we can go in with white out and put highlights along that seam line and it again helps sell this idea that we're looking at armor or chrome to be look, like looking straight at us the same way that one is there. Another thing about metal is like the more reflections you can put in, the better. And when I say the more, I'm not saying like go crazy about it. A lot of times you'll see, uh, especially in the old Bob Layton, John Romita Jr. Iron Man, they'll draw for example, okay. You know, the 
draw Iron Man. And then they'll light it in a way where all of a sudden there's like big circle, medium sized circle, small circle. And they'll kind of do that everywhere. And you go like, wow, that looks really metallic. And the reason why is that, again, it, it tricks the, it's a cipher. It's something that tricks the brain into thinking it's seeing something. The same way, a cipher, the same way if I draw same way as if I draw lines going back. If I draw a tree here, and another tree like that, and a smaller tree like that, and perspective lines, you can't help but feel like you're looking into space, that um, you're looking towards a horizon point. And these objects, even though I've drawn three different size trees, that you, in your mind, think that they're all the same height, but just smaller because of perspective. And with those white dots that I just drew on the side of Iron Man is the reflections of lights overhead. Even if Iron Man is out in the middle of the desert, um, they'll do the same rendering trick, uh, which I think is funny. Um, because at that point, it's become such a cipher that the mind immediately thinks of reflections and shiny metal that it's not really reading exactly what it is. And basically, if there's lights overhead... Okay, and they're going off in a distance like this, overhead lights. And I say in an office space. And these are windows. It's these lights that are being reflected on top of all shell head. All right. So just by putting those three Old school Iron Man right there. Right. Oh my god. Okay. So that light is here. This light is here. That light is here. And you could do the same thing with these windows. One, two, three. Right. So you can basically one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. And if you kind of do them. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. It starts making it look more metallic. LB Buddha 19. It's been great, Jim. Thank you for the tutorials, TR3. Thank you for resubscribing for four months. Fearless Observer. Love your stream and your art. Batman Hush got me into comics when I was a kid, and I never turned back. That was 15 years ago, dude. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's... It's cool that it um, still has an impact after all that time. Mallory B. Wilson has resubscribed. Thank you very much. QuickDraw13 has followed. QuickDraw13 is... It's, it's Jamie. You haven't followed? What's going on? I thought you were a fan. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> just wondering, have you actually met your mods before? I have. I have. I ran into one of my mods on accident... Uh, well, I had I had lunch with Kate and Renee. Um, I've never been so uh, fortunate or unfortunate uh, to to meet Crispy, but I, I have met with Kate and Renee, gave them the tour of the office. We had lunch actually on the Warner Brothers lot. Um, but then I ran into Renee again um, at a Lakers game. We we're at the same Lakers game. I think we were just uh, on social media, and then I realized, hey, he's here. Anyway, accident, yeah, I accidentally ran into Renee. <laughs> I actually stalk Renee, that's, th that's the thing. Um, Crispy said you guys had burritos before. Yes, only in the biblical sense. Okay, so um, there's my cyborg. I want to put a background on there. I want to smear some ink. It's been a while. I'm rusty. So I've got some ink here. I've got a Kleenex here. And um, I'm just going to... This is actually a paper towel. It's going to give me a slightly different effect. Let's see what happens. I'm going to do a kind of a... 
weird electrical crackle kind of thing. Okay. And now I'm gonna smear. Um, Kanger Banger. Yeah, what happened, Kanger? You canceled on us. Um, Latimer. I think uh, the way we're doing it is we're 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 actually um. Uh, doing some meetups for some of the subs at different conventions, so um, that that information will be on the D Discord channel. And then I found out also that uh, TwitchCon is actually organized by the people at Read Pop. It's actually a Read Pop show, so. Um, that, uh, means nothing really <laughs> to anyone here in the channel other than, uh, I know people that read pop and, um, uh, always makes for, they do, they do good shows and so it kind of, it's exciting. Do they have it at the same spot every year? Long Island? Is that, or Long Island? Long Beach? Is that kind of? I know the answer to this, but meaning I've asked it before and had an answer, I just don't remember. Okay, so that's my warm up sketch. Obviously, I haven't drawn it in a couple of days. And uh, just sort of having some fun here. But um, I should look at people that have cheered and uh, use that as sort of inspiration for the more in-depth um, drawing that I do in the remaining time. So I'm going to go to the, check that out in a second here. So the idea is that, you know, he's like, Mr. Telecommunication, so like this idea of that he's got, if you're near him, you basically have no Wi-Fi, no cellular service. <laughs> he's like this magnet, electromagnetic being, and so if you're around Cyborg, your phones don't work because he's just generating so much crazy energy. Yeah, you probably get, I'm, uh, you know, I'm sure Cyborg can figure out a way to offer free Wi-Fi to the rest of the team. <laughs> All right. Um, what are the treasures that pop up once in a while? They, uh, someone did explain, I think Kate explained what they were. There's something that, uh, little treasure chest, they do mean something. It needs the red seat in his chest. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Only problem is I don't want it to take away from what I've got up here. 
especially since I left this kind of open. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave it the way I left it. If I go in and do the red down here, it's gonna distract from what I got going up here. And uh, I'm gonna sign right here anyway, so. All right, so that's the sideboard. Okay. Um, Jedi B311, then leave it open. It's your drawing. Well, thank you. I, that's what I decided to do. Um, mm, 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 mm. Okay, we could do the... Yeah, Kirihiko was explaining. The chest which pops up sometimes belongs to the Streamlabs point system. I don't know what we do with that, but it's just something that exists. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to go on to... Um, so I think we're going to give this away and this away. I think we are back to... I think last time was sub 25 only, so this will be open. I'm going to do this to open to all, and then this open to subs, 5, 10, 25. And I'm going to do um, a more finished piece in the little over hour that we have. Um, got some people that have cheered. Let's see. Tith has cheered. One day you will be at a convention that is less than 600 miles from me. One day. All right, Tith, where do you live? Let me know. And I will hint at you by blinking one eye if I'm coming within 600 miles of you within the next year. Because I do have, I, I plan out my appearances about a year, year and a half out. So I'm already Pretty much booked for this year, and I've already got stuff planned for 2019 as well. P Street Poe has subscribed. Thank you very much. Uh, Spider-Man 63 has cheered. Brandon Louise 19 has cheered. So thank you very much, guys. Tith is Memphis, Tennessee. I can't even blink with one. <laughs> I wish I were that coordinated. Richie Rich has cheered. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, where's my appearance calendar? So the best place is actually Discord. I put stuff on the Discord even before I tweet it out or um, anytime I mention it in chat, what's going on, uh, Kate and Renee and Crispy are on it and they basically update the Discord channel. So uh, there's a whole section on appearances and... Um, uh, yeah. Am I coming back to Dallas Fan Expo? Not this year, but possibly in the future. Come back to Canada. That's likely, but not this year as well. Hope to see you in Europe this year. That is very, very likely. Have I ever done Arizona Comic Con? I've done it, I think, twice. I've been in Arizona twice or Phoenix twice, but that was uh, several years ago. I will definitely be at San Diego Comic Con. Latimer says, I'm in Memphis as well. You're saying to Tiff. Luca Comics and Games, I was there five years ago in Luca. I don't know if that's going to happen this year, but uh, maybe. New York Comic Con, I will definitely be there this year. Any signings I'm doing for Free Comic Book Day this year, I have not made any plans. Feel free to come back to Houston. Yeah, that was a great time. That was like a crazy all-day Driving around Houston, I think we did like six stores uh, in one day, which is pretty pretty nuts. Mud Light, good to see you today. Missed you this weekend. Yeah, I missed you guys as well. Yesterday was a travel day. It was pretty pretty blasted from the flight back. Basically spent time with the family. Went from 17 degree, degree weather to 70 degree weather here, or 80 degree weather. I think it hit 80 here in the valley. So we basically took the dogs out for a walk, got some ice cream. It was pretty cool. And then we watched 
um, some more episodes of Black Mirror, this show called Love on Netflix, uh, which is hilarious. And uh, I, was, I read some of uh, my, my, my book. I got some reading in, which was really awesome, reading a book about the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, Anthony Bevor is the writer. It's nonfiction. It's super dry. It's all just data and and numbers. But uh, for whatever reason, I find it interesting. Okay. Yeah, Black Mirror is so good. Yeah, it was Hang the DJ was the elephant. Or elephant. <laughs> Run Elephant. That was the episode I saw last night that, that my wife and I watched. I thought it was really pretty kick-ass. That was a pretty good one. Hang the DJ, which is a reference to a song... Thank you for the cheers, P Street Poe. Uh, can I explain the golden ratio? Uh, I'll do that next time. That's a longer conversation. So I'm going to look at the the bits. Uh, Chase333 has resubscribed. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for streaming. We know you're, busy. you're so busy. Appreciate that, the sentiment and the cheers. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to look to... Um, I'm looking at the leaderboard. I've got uh, on my Streamlabs, I've got P Street Poe, Richie Rich, Brandon Louise, the Spider-Man, Tith, uh, the the people that last. So there's like one, two, three, four, five. There are five people there that have cheered. I'm going to pick one of the five. Uh, Trevor Kai has cheered, so there's six. So Siri, pick a random number between one and six. It's Six. Six. So the sixth person, one, two, three, four, five, six, is Tith. Tith. Pick a character for me to uh, draw, and uh, we'll go from there. Am I going to Silicon Valley Comic Con? Um, no. Uh, so just FYI, this whole thing with Siri, um, it's funny because I used to try to pick random numbers at panels for giveaways, and it would always mess up and uh, wouldn't understand what I was saying. And it was pretty hilarious, and now it's they finally fixed that. Platypus has subscribed. Thank you very much. Is the person, did he say something? Did Tith say something? Tith? Tith? Just, just JC, Jesse, Jesse, Jesse 80. I have not seen your last comment. It moved by very quickly. I see s glimpses of what you guys are saying. Caitlin Fairchild. Okay. I think I can do that. Kuyamu. I love how bad of listeners most of the people here are. I would say that's generally true of the internet in general. Uh, the best is like when I when we would say like don't spam the channel, then everyone just starts spamming. So it's pretty funny. Okay. Okay. Who do you want to be? The next Batman. I have no idea. Sorry. Okay, thanks, Renee. So, Caitlin Fairchild. All right. Okay. So... <clears throat> Uh, kind of walk you through uh, what you should do is uh, the upside down egg for the head, little cylinder for the neck. Think of the like a clothes hanger for the shoulders. If that makes sense, right? It's not a bad thing to. And then and then and then this, the back bone right there.
Hmm. So you can sort of see I'm picking out uh, edges and shapes. Um, important lines, I would say, in a figure. And this is a per fairly blunt uh, pencil tip. And what I like about doing that is uh, I'm not committed to a specif specific line and allows me to, to um, do this kind of drop in shadows very easily and quickly. Belly button. Thank you, to Carrasco, for the cheers. Appreciate it. And I don't know about this other arm. What is this other arm going to be doing? She could be lifting up a bunch of rocks or something super heavy. I'm doing an approximation of her suit that she had. Design-wise. You can see I'm kind of drawn the outside of her as well to find that line. All right, that um, that kind of defines her her hips here. And I'll basically do that until I feel like I've got the the, the forms and shapes, and then I can go in and. Um, start drawing an ink. the last um, drawing session I kind of focused on um, the George Bridgman
cut trick which is to draw the rib cage. So I'm going to show you kind of where that is here. All right, that's the center line there. And then the pelvis would be here. All right. And so that's the line kind of. Again, I'm drawing kind of behind her at the same time I'm drawing her. And that kind of gives me a sense of whether I've got the shapes down or not. Okay. Why he, Jim, often reminds me why I do drawing as a hobby and not a job. Why is that? sketch that finished would take me a day. Jim did in 10 minutes. Oh, well, uh, I can, I can draw slower too. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not so much the speed. I think it's really, um, knowing where to put the lines. If I could be so simplistic. Um, so as I do this, even though I'm moving the pencil around quickly, um, I'm very, aware of where that point is going to be, where that is, that the points on her hips to kind of convey that she's got weight on this leg here. I'm also thinking about kind of the, the, uh, the measurements uh, to make sure that the, the thighs are, are the same height, or same height, the same width. Um, dropping the, the center line down from her chin down to here and, and where the belly button would be. And then as I draw that kind of spot, I'm thinking about the lighting as it comes across and how I want the rendering to be here and here. Um, okay. So a lot of these are construction lines. A lot of these are costume lines. All right. So if that elbow's there, I got to put this one kind of right there. So it's a lot of cross-referencing back and forth. Um, I'm just doing it very quickly, but it's something, I don't, I don't know if the speed, it's just because I've done it a lot, but if you're drawing at home, whether for fun or professionally, I would really recommend um, that as you draw, you're trying to capture the emotional content, um, the forms, but also just be very aware of um, your silhouette line as much as what you're drawing inside, but also kind of the edge of what you're drawing. Right? Okay. I think I've got it. Um, Poop Kid said something. What did Poop Kid say? Muscle memory, yes. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Practice, practice, practice. That's what... Okay. I think it looks all right. This I'm going to have to uh, figure out. Maybe the hips are a little narrow. Right, but now as this thigh kind of gets wider. Okay. 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 Now we have marker. And obviously there wasn't a lot there in terms of the face. Uh, the eyes were just kind of blobbed. So this is the tricky part is kind of uh, trying to nail kind of the 
the uh, sort of emotional state of the face, the expression. And so uh, it's sort of coming to me as I draw. And we'll see what happens here. Okay. I don't want that nose to be too long. Okay. And then. It's almost like uh, you're trying to find the, uh, the expression, but you don't want to think about it too much. You kind of want to, I don't know who's governing it. Is it the pen? Is it my hand? hand? Is it my head? Is it the drawing? Is the drawing speaking to me? Is it taking over? Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's, it's getting there, but I can't think about it too much because then it starts messing with my head. I just have to kind of draw it, if that makes sense. sense. interesting about this is that uh, I feel like the neck is super long now but that's easy to adjust and it's been a long time since I've drawn this character Is it weird? I don't even draw it digitally that much, but as I was doing the detail on her lips, I literally wanted to grab the page and do this and expand in. Crazy. Weird. I've had my kids kind of touch the screens of my laptops and go like, the computer's not working. It's not registering. All right. I feel like head is the head is good. So now just all I need to do is raise the shadow uh, sh shadow the shoulders a bit. Which is good because it allows me to kind of broaden her shoulders. Cuz she is the powerhouse of the team. All right. Still seems to work. Control Z sometimes. Control Z like Control Alt. Control Alt Delete. I really should connect this camera to something else that doesn't shake so much. Um. McFarlane had a great method of spending a week on one part and then connecting the rest to that part. That's an interesting approach. I, I like drawing everything as a whole, meaning I wouldn't just focus on one thing. Like if you get if you just focus on just drawing hands over and over, it, it's, it's not just how you draw the hand, but how it kind of connects to the rest of the body. But you know, it doesn't hurt to um, to methodically kind of focus on something over and over again until you get better and better at it. I, you know, I like to think of any sort of skill as, uh, so like, let's use PUBG as an example. Uh, you're going to play it, you're going to play something, you're going to start here at, at zero ability, or negative zero ability, let's say in my instance here, negative zero. And you, you'll get better and better as you play more and more, but at some point you're going to tap out, you're, you're going to get diminishing returns. And then you're going to actually start, the more time you put in, the worse you're going to get. But then I find that if you basically give it a day or two refractory kind of time or whatever, um, you can then, let's say, in, in, in drawing, I think this is like almost a month or three months, depending on your ability, you can kind of build up some more, and then you'll get diminishing returns, and then you kind of build, you have to wait, and then you can kind of build off that. So there is some downtime that you have to expect, uh, as you're sort of learning skills, it's not something where if you just keep drawing 
intensely that you're only going to get better. Uh, you're going to find that. And I think that's the frustrating part about it is like at some point, the more time you put in, the worse it gets. Um, so you almost have to kind of give it a, your mind a break so that it can kind of uh, consolidate what it's learned and um, um, take information that you've put into sort of short-term memory or short-term ability and transfer it over to long-term knowledge. And um, I think that's how you probably learn anything, whether it's a video game or drawing or whatever. So just keep that in mind. just going to go a little bit faster because uh, if I explain everything as I talk, I realize I draw slower. Someone said that it looks like Daphne. Now I can't get it out of my head. It does look like Daphne cosplaying as Caitlin Fairchild. So... Thank you, whoever put that thought in my head. Thank you, Quick Draw. Cheers. These tutorials are gold. I'm currently working on a 22-page story. Yikes! But these are play. These are playing. These are playing in the background. Super inspiring. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jamie. Appreciate it. Congrats on getting a 22-page story. Jamie is a he's a big fan uh, from Australia, who I've gotten to to uh, learn more about over the years. And uh, he's a guy that uh, has been nonstop, really, in his desire to, to, to learn how to draw and uh, has made great strides. And I think that's kind of like how it's done, to be honest. And uh, it seems like he's getting work now, which is great. The Joker 808 has cheered. Thank you very much. Several, a couple times. And Jamie again, so I missed that. And streaming fish. Stream stream swimming fish has cheered. Thank you very much. Stream swimming fish. And A4 Stupid Hands Lad has subscribed. Okay. All right, let me uh, see if I can make some. I've got uh, about 45 minutes here. Art Munch has resubscribed. Thank you, Art Munch. Appreciate it. This is a 0.3 marker, so I'm going to do all my basic sort of underlying structure using this. And then I'm going <coughs> to, excuse me, go back in and um, beef up some of the lines, maybe using this marker or a different marker or that pen brush, I don't know. See how that looks to the light here. Looks alright. Okay. Like I said, this is uh, I'm doing this costume kind of from memory, but I'm also alternate uh, sort of revising it. I know it's not exactly the costume that she had in the '90s, but that was a long time ago. Okay. 
And if you notice with this uh, seam line, I've actually kind of helped delineate some of the forms through some of the undulations of the line itself. I'm thinking about the, the forms that it's sort of trying to describe. This line's very sketchy. What's interesting is this marker is a little dead, so it's not necessarily drawing every line as I, that I put down, which is a bit of a challenge, but the pencil line I put down is so dark that it's actually really kind of filling in the gaps. Hey, Will Bruce Hart, thank you for the cheers. Batman Guy 4, same thing, appreciate it. Dr. Minus, Dr. Dr. O Minus has subscribed, thank you. And thank you, you know, for all the people that have followed as well. There's far more of those. Um, it's great to have you guys on board. Leaf Blower Madness. Yes. Yes, I just realized. Um, I don't know if you're pointing that out for the first time. Um, but that is a staple of these wonderful Sunday streams. Or Sunday streams. Monday streams. Sunday, Monday streams. There are people that like to work on their yards or have people work on their yards. He's taking a bit of a break, thankfully. Okay, I'm thinking, I need to start thinking about dropping some line weights that are thicker. Some lettering over here. As you can see, I'm not really drawing the letters. I'm drawing the, the cutouts of the letters. If that makes sense. And then I think there's like some weird genetic DNA stuff that goes on up there. Um, <clears throat> Tony Kenobi, Jim, any chance you'd open your own online store? I've noticed many artists selling prints and such online. It's possible. It's just a lot of work. Um, I'm primarily a one-person shop, although I have people, you know, I have an art rep and stuff like that. Um, excuse me, one second.
this. I'm going to some of these lines here. True, true. Spamming is definitely not the way to go. Flat Ronnie is definitely the way to go. That's the person behind me, if you guys are wondering who that is. It's my wife, one second. My true overlord. Um, the creepy man in the back has got me. Well, you have defined Flat Ronnie right there. Um, how can I watch this stream from the start? Uh, they will be on my channel. It really started actually from this. Um, <clears throat> I'll put all three. We had to kind of stop because it was getting laggy. I, I reduced the uh, resolution of the stream itself, and that made a big difference. Hey, when are we going to do those level 15 raids in WoW again? Um, hey, Zombie Geef. Uh, welcome back. Yeah, so in my inaugural stream of the year, I, I basically have kind of, um, I, I can't necessarily commit to a lot of streams this year. It's just, there's too much going on. So at this point, uh, there'll be fewer gaming streams. Like if I stream once a week, three times a month, essentially, um, if I do a gaming stream, that will count as one of those. So I have to, I want to balance the art with the gaming, meaning focus more on the art. And, um, cause I think that's what people, why well, I know that's why people are here and, um, the gaming stuff out. I will see it's kind of a uh, work in progress in that it takes time. And at the end of the day, I've got a ton of things going on. I'm going to make everything I'm doing more meaningful. And I'm, when I say, when I say everything, not everything that I, I, I stream per se, but just everything I'm doing terms of my creative work and uh... okay so now I'm just using the brush here to think of thinking of her arms as chrome right spandex whatever material you want to think about it so I am using the same ideas that I I, I used on this cyborg drawing to really kind of focus on where these shadows and reflections would be. Okay. And then as I get more towards this dry brush, it actually helps me out in that I can do a lot more medium tones. Which are, I think, critical to selling this idea that it's reflective surfaces. So there are areas that um, I basically waited to, to ink until my brush started getting kind of dry. So now I can kind of come in and do some of the rendering I was talking about around this belly button. Okay. Same thing here. I'm gonna drop that shadow of the that fist right there. Right. 
in our sense that the brush is drying again, so it allows me to go in. This is a bare arm over here, so there's not going to be a crazy dry brush effect going on. But all this area will have it still. Just waiting for the brush to kind of dry a little bit more. I'm going to maybe darken those areas here. There we go. Dry brush is in the house. Did I just say that? That's <laughs> that's lame. Excuse. I excuse. Excuse me. I'm having trouble with the English language today. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I forget this microphone picks up everything I say. In the house! That's right. All right, uh, what else we got going on here? Do you think women superheroes ever get cold? They're all, always hardly dressed. Um, correct. They, they could use more clothing. This is a throwback to the 90s. In fact, I think when I drew her on the cover of the Wildstorm 25th, I put her in pants, I believe, I want to say. Yeah. So there'll be some gaming stuff. I'm not saying it's all locked out, but it, you know, I think at the height of it, I was probably streaming two to three times a week which uh, you know it's you think like oh it's just an hour here hour there but it adds up and uh, it was definitely taking away from other stuff that I had to you know that I was working on Wang, I do not speak English. I like your picture. Your picture is wonderful. I, I will often s see your stream. Thank you very much, Oak Wang. I appreciate it. Jacob, Jacob Gertsen one. I don't understand what you're doing. Um, I'm using a brush and moving ink across the page. Um, but it's dry, dry brush, which means that the, the ink is. It's not fully loaded on the brush, and so you don't get a, a dark, thick line. So you get something that looks kind of almost like a pencil line. I'm just moving around in circles like this. Small happy circles. Small little happy circle there. Here, here. Do you do ink wash too? Uh, I have, I have. When I was doing Batman Hush, I guess one time I could, I can do an ink wash session for sure. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. I would be down for that, as the kids like to say. So that line is a little dark, and so I'm going to create a dry brush effect here. By taking as much.
much ink out of it as possible. And moving that line, there we go. Okay. What is ink wash? Ink wash is basically what I just did, except uh, you dilute the ink. It's like watercolor, so you get a very, very light grain, uh, gray line. Are you a Todd McFarlane fan? I'm a huge Todd McFarlane fan. Why would I not be a Todd McFarlane fan? So I need a leaf blower emoji and in the house emoji. Yes, in the house. <laughs> um, golden high flow acrylics. No, never heard of them. Are more comic book artists moving to use tab tablets more than traditional techniques? I assume so. What are the best times to use ink wash? Um, I don't know, between like 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. in the afternoon? I don't know. <laughs> uh, Tim Sale does great ink washes. That is correct. Maybe you wouldn't be a McFarlane fan because of the time at the batting cages. Like, that's just a funny story. No biggie. Um, the only person I know using mainly traditional drawings is you and Greg. Uh, you, you need to meet more artists. There's a ton of people that are just drawing straight on paper. Or maybe not. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's just me and Greg Capullo. That's it. We're the last ones. All right, so now I've got sort of uh, the shadows, uh, and like I did with the cyborg, I'm going to go in and add some thin lines next to the thicker reflections, okay, so that they don't look like brush strokes, per se. Fools the mind. Do some rendering here on this glove. Beef up that line here. I'm just cleaning up some of the edges here. Just kind of better defining them, straightening out lines, cleaning up some of the sketchiness of some of the lines here. Beefing up some of the lines here so they stand out more. I think why it's good to kind of mix and match, meaning throw in some of the thinner lines on top of the thicker lines is, again, so from the viewer's point of view, uh, they don't know if what they're looking at is a, is a brush line or a pen line. And that's just my own personal kind of approach or preference. I mean, obviously, people know that it's a line drawn by an instrument, but if something looks entirely brushed to me, you have to be awesome with the brush. And if something is just all line work, you got to do some interesting kind of rendering and put some life into it. But when you mix the two up, it's like, did, was that accomplished by drawing lots of little lines to fill in that black area? Or was it um, all done with a very thin brush and it's... I don't know what value there is to keeping that a mystery, but um, there is some value, I think, into um, kind of fooling the mind. So 
so they're not sure what they're seeing, so that rather than focus on the line as lines, they're seeing shapes and energy and uh, movement and all these other things that aren't typically associated with line work or art. Not art. Um, with with uh, with drawing, illustration, right? I'm trying to create a, a feeling, an expression. All right, so that's kind of what I'm working on right now. It's just kind of cleaning up some of the stuff here. All that I just said, said very poorly. I'd have to rethink what I just said and re-express it at another time. But the same way, I try not to draw everything with just curved lines or straight lines. Kind of mix it up. And uh, I find that um, it allows you to kind of have the best of both worlds. And so what I'm trying to say is when you use a brush, you get you get a definite kind of vibe or feel to the drawing, and if you use just pen work, you get a definite look. And uh, I like to mix the two of them up so that I can kind of tap into both ways of expressing forms and lines. I think that was a slightly better way of explaining what I just was trying to say. And I think the master of that is uh, Bill Sienkiewicz. He's just amazing. The way he kind of just is fearless and just puts down shapes and lines. And it's both artsy and um, rep figurative and representational and just uh, fun to look at. It's like you're looking at the object, but you're also looking at an illustration that's just works on so many different levels. Okay, it's 12.11. There are a lot of artists doing great digital artwork like Mike Diogiato Jr. and Sarah, Sarah Pacelli. Yep, I, I follow both uh, both those artists on uh, Instagram. Great, great stuff. Will I be adding colors to Caitlin? Only if I want to ruin the drawing. Uh, so no. Do I ever use Copics, Copics, Copics? Uh, no, not really. I'm not a big fan of Copic markers just because um, they kind of bleed. And what happens is, uh, like, when you go over a line with a Copic line, it's sort of like using the multiply tool in Photoshop. And um, I just don't like that effect, I guess. You can't get... A flat color to fill in an area that right if I took a gray value and said okay I'm gonna make this all gray you see a copic if I went over an area or overlapped an area rendering just once you're gonna see that darker line and um, I'm not a fan of it and they're super expensive but my kids used to draw copics that's how I know they're expensive, because I would buy them for, for them. Okay, now I'm just going to erase some of the rendering in some of the areas, but not completely. I don't want it to look like, um, like 
like I've said in other streams, I like having the line work there. I like it looking sketchy. I like when the, uh, but, but I also know that some of the lines there do show up in the drawing. And so I'm trying to get rid of the ones that I feel kind of break the forms and don't reinforce what I'm trying to achieve. stomach grumbling, but that was bad. I think it's telling me that the stream is over. <laughs> Time to eat. Wide out. Spicy avocado burger yesterday. That sounds good. Jatrexy, got to go work out, but I can't stop watching. I'm almost done. Okay. David Teven Tevenol is a great example of proper copy. Yeah, look, it's not the tools. It's, it's how you use them, I'm sure. Like with all things. There's a, a way to sort of surmount the things I just kind of talked about, but that's just me. All right, I'm going to take white out here. I'm going to finish this, fix this emaciated thigh. Okay, so we're going to go back in and redefine that. I'm going to clean up some of the edges here. Okay. Pick some of the highlights here. And do a little bit of rendering, like it's almost like ribs, but also like the three lights that we were talking about. Three light reflections right there, right? Um, right there, pick out that, that edge there.
do some more rendering here with the pencil. Just kind of darkening up values. And I think I'm done. Mom's yelling at me to study only because she loves you and has your best interests at heart. I got to defend your mom here for a second. Good going, mom. Appreciate that. I do the same thing. And I'm sure when she's yelling at you, she's probably just telling you and you are considering it to be yelling. Anyway, uh, can you show us how to draw a form that's muscular? Take a look at this baby right here. It's all right here. <laughs> all right, great. Um, yeah, so I got to work on that lawn blower, uh, leaf blower emoji, and the technical issues and in the house. Those are the th next three, so I will remember that. So thank you guys for tuning in. I want to thank uh, Kira and Ren Elephant for being mods. And wouldn't you know it, as soon as we uh, upgraded um, Crispy to mod, he basically blows off the stream, tanning his, uh, his, uh, <laughs> his crispy body, <laughs> Lake Tahoe. Um, so thank you guys uh, for tuning in. It is 12, 20, I have 10 minutes. So basically I'm going to, um, so the, the, the Caitlin Fairchild, I'm going to do as, uh, so what we've done is um, it's a, I need to open my Twitch page here one second. Uh, basically, I've had people, we do a silent auction, I guess that's what it's called. People whisper in a bid and just put one bid in. I don't do it yet, but only put one bid and um, put it in the very first line. And so I don't have to necessarily open up the whisper. That helps speed things up. And... Um, you guys can go ahead and do that. And then the cyborg is going to be um, open to sub 5, 10, 25. We'll do that in a second. And then this model sheet, which has Batman on it, Daredevil, Iron Man. This could be um, Ghost Rider. Oh my god, look, it's Ghost Rider. Um, this will go out to everyone in chat. Okay. And on the back, I've got my amazing rendering of a bullet, upside of nostrils, and original Silver Age Iron Man. Okay, so I'm going to start um, with uh, this one here, open to all. Okay. <laughs> when you're broken, mom and, and Jim has betrayed you, your, your mom's side. You'll thank me later. All that extra studying will come in handy. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so people can share with you how to whisper. I'm not sure exactly how it's done, but there's like a little... At the bottom of your Twitch page, there is a thing called whisper. And you can pop in... Uh, the Spider-Man 1963, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you guys are doing it correctly, I think. All right, so this one's going to go out to um, anybody and everybody. So here we go. One second, guys. Oh, it doesn't look like... Uh, it only has like 110, 112 users, so do not spam the channel. Just type in one thing, and it will, it will lock you in. Okay? In the app. I don't know if, it, if you can whisper in the app. I'm pretty sure you can. Um, one second, let me show you. Let me think show you let me let me see how it's done first of all so 
at the um, top of the page, at least on an iPhone, it has channels, friends, whispers. So you have to go out of the stream and you'll see whispers and you tap whispers and uh, start a whisper. It's the upper right hand corner. You should be able to do that. Okay. All right. Great. So this, uh, there's nothing you type in. That, that whole thing we've kind of proven doesn't uh, work too well. So this is for the, the uh, lighting scheme schematic. The winner is Daniel J. Bosco. Okay. Who uh, has been subbing and following since September 3rd. Thank you very much, Daniel Bosco. And thank you, actually, I, I think you sent me like a Starbucks card over the holiday. So thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. My, my pitifully um, caffeine-deprived uh, body appreciates it. So, All right, let me send you a quick message here. And for the people that won last time, I have not sent out the art. I've been so busy traveling, I haven't had a chance to um, put those in the mail. So nothing's lost. It just will be sent out then. Okay. Um, next up is the Cyborg. Excuse me. Sorry about that. So the Cyborg will be for anyone 5, 10, or 25. Flat Ronnie not happy with the winner. <laughs> 68. Okay. Um, here we go. I'm going to roll. The winner is Tith. Tith. Congrats, man. Following since August 29th. Tith is also a pretty regular cheerer. He was the one that suggested the, the Caitlin Fairchild, I believe. So, congrats on the cyborg. Ah, that did not go as planned. Hold on one second. All right. And then uh, I'm, I'm going to check... Uh, so I, I think everyone's had enough time to um, send in whispers. So I'm going to go check this real quick, if I can, if this will let me. OK, so thank you guys for uh, following the stream. I appreciate your support. And let's see where we're at. Excuse me. Okay, one second. Uh, a lot of people seem to be dropping in last minute bids here. I wonder if there's a way to just open it up as a series of it's just a window one second guys 
Do not send a second message after your bid because it overwrites your first message in, in terms of what I'm seeing. And so I'm not digging in through the threads. I'm just looking at what shows up. And if you just write the amount, that would be perfect. So if you say, did this go through? All I see is, did this go through? And I'm not going to see the bid that you put through. Okay. So just hold your horses. Don't whisper me your address for the, if you want these. Only reply to the message I sent you guys, all right? Thank you. All right. I think you guys have locked and frozen my, my Twitch stream. I'm going to have to refresh. Okay. Can't be good. I'm assuming that the stream is still happening, but my Twitch feed froze. Okay. Sorry, I'll put this up here for now. One second. So you can see if any of you have just showed up, I'm going through. I think I have a winner, but um, <laughs> poop kid. Uh, <laughs> he uh, he bid. I don't know if this is serious, but he bid with. Uh, I'm going to do a quick calculation here. He bid with uh, Bitcoin, because we're always talking about Bitcoin. I just want to see what he bid. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um. Hey, John Sipple, high school classmate of mine. Okay, I think, uh, any Bitcoin updates or stories? Other than I have some Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, ICX. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's there. But yeah, I would accept Bitcoin for a drawing. Sure, why not? Okay, I think I have the winner. I've I've scrolled through. This is the third time I'm kind of rolling through, and, I, and uh, the worst is... Um, uh, okay, so what I've done in the past is I don't announce who won, but I just announce how much it uh, it was um, for people's privacy and whatnot. The reason I was thinking about getting Ripple uh, Pity eighty three. It was just a hassle to to get RP. I think it's RXP or and so I didn't, and it had had a nice bump up after but that's subsequently gone down so at this point really with any sort of cryptocurrency you just buy and hold because uh, if you buy and sell based on its ups and downs you're going to just drive yourself crazy anyway um art munch you're invited to my dad's retirement party i appreciate it i don't know if your dad would appreciate it but thank you very much all right so i think the winner uh got it for Looks like it's a thousand eighty-five. Okay, so let's say congrats.
Okay. All right, guys. Uh, I started off with Coinbase, now I use Bittrex. Yeah. I'm, there's so many different cryptocurrencies at this point, so many different exchanges. So um, we'll probably get some sort of PUBG action going on next week, although I'm traveling. So, uh, yeah, uh, I will have to, um, again, check out the Discord for, for future streams. I will try to put something up in events. It's really hard to when you're traveling because the uh, remote app doesn't allow you to um, actually post events and get into some of the important dashboard functionality. You have to have a desktop or a laptop, and I usually just travel with my phone or iPad. Anyway, so thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you um, most likely next week. Details to come. All right, take care. Most likely it will be Sunday.